Man, Starbucks kind of sucks. I was uh, just trying out the cold brew, like the, the vanilla cream. It tastes like burnt crap. It was like five bucks for this thing. I'm not much of a complainer, but I had to go back and tell them to add sugar to it, and it still tastes like burnt crap. Um, I'm definitely gonna recommend. I'm just I'm gonna show you guys how I make my own cold brew because it's it's a lot better. And uh, you know, roasting our own coffee like it doesn't have that burnt Starbucks crap flavor. I don't know why pay so much money for just kind of like mediocre or garbage coffee. So anyway, I think the cold brew sucks. All right, so this is how you make awesome cold brew coffee, way better than Starbucks. You start off with some nice dark roast beans. These are not as dark as Starbucks. They're probably more like a full city plus, a full city. Starbucks is more like a French kind of roast. Anyway, and we need a nice burr grinder. This is actually, this is a cheap burr grinder. Uh, it's like 50 bucks, but I go to the core setting right over here. And I'll just pour about a cup, about a cup of beans, just like that. Pretty much you want fresh beans, freshly ground. That's the secret. And uh, we'll start, um, we'll start grinding. All right, we are done grinding here. As you can see, a nice coarse. Now, this is actually not a very good grinder, but uh, about as about as coarse as like French French press, you know, kind of grind. And um, I just use a mason jar. I use the wide lid because it's easier to put in there. Obviously, what is the size of this? this? Is the 200 milliliter? Oh wait, 800 milliliters or 24 ounces. So uh, basically, I use like a one to five ratio, somewhere in there, one to four, one to five. So one part coffee to you know about four or five parts water. I'm using fresh, cold, filtered water, and I'm going to kind of just pour a little bit at once. That way I don't you know shock anything. It's cold, so it won't really shock anyway. But you don't want to ag agitate too much because that's where you get a lot of bitter flavors. And cold brew is especially good when it's just, you know, nice and sweet and earthy. And, you know, it's strong, but it's not like in your face, bitter, you know. So I'll do something like that. And then we'll top it off here. Just like that. You know, if you want, you can kind of shake it a little bit. It doesn't really matter too much, I noticed. But really, essentially, this is going to be a nice concentrate. So it'll be very strong. We'll let this steep for about 20 hours, you know, overnight in my refrigerator. We'll come back and then we can use this as a concentrate. I'll show you how I filter it. And we are back exactly 20 hours later. This is what it looks like, the exact same thing. And we're gonna do this in the sink because it can get very messy. What I've done is I've pre-moistened a filter here, just like a pour over filter, and we're gonna go right into a cold brew container. Um, you can just, you can use another mason jar for this, but I think it's kinda of cool because it says cold brew, and uh, you know, I can keep this in my refrigerator, and uh, I can, you know, kinda of put the date on there. It can last up to a month. It's just kind of a cool find. So what we're gonna do is, Obviously, go slow with this, okay? Because it, it, it could seriously make a mess. I've learned the hard way to do this in the sink. Oh, see? I made a suction. And uh, so you can already see I made a mess with the grounds. <laughs> so basically, I'm just going to pour this in here. And I'm not going to agitate too much because there's a lot of grounds in the bottom of the jar here. So. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to let the grounds sit in the bottom. That's where a lot of the tannins are. We don't want the tannins. That means bitter, bitter flavors. So this is just a time game. If it gets too slow, you can use a fork. Kind of get the grounds out of the bottom. All right, see all this schmuck? Yeah, you don't want to put too much of that in there. It's a lot of tannins. So I'm going to leave it like that. 
And then we're just going to filter this out because that has all the nasty flavors. All right, as you can see, there's a little bit left in here. You, you can get the rest of that, but honestly, it's not going to be as flavorful and it's going to take a long time. Same with this. There's some water in there, but eh, is it worth it? Probably not because this is a lot of bitter tannins. So what we're going to do, set this to the side. Let's get our top here. And then we just rinse everything off. Kind of clean up a little bit. All right, so we have our cold brew ready to go. We have a cup of ice. Now this is gonna be iced coffee. You can actually put hot water in this, but I don't like it that way. I just use cream and milk to dilute it. So as you can see, I'm using about a third of the cup full of coffee. And I'm going to do a little bit of half and half. And I'm going to actually make this even a little bit weaker. Some milk. Like that. Maybe just a little bit more coffee. I'm doing by color. Okay. And, you know, it doesn't look very strong, but this is very strong. Just a little bit of syrup. This is a caramel syrup. You don't need much because it's not very bitter. So let's try this out. Get a nice stir stick. I almost forgot to try the drink on camera. It is so good. There's plenty of like chocolatey flavors coming through. And it has a, a real nice rounded earth kind of like sweetness to it. I mean, there's just a lot more flavor and the finish is super long on these. It doesn't look like much, you know, but you know, and the caramel doesn't, it's not really present, but it, it lets the milk do most of the sweetness. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's a lot better than, than Starbucks. It's more refreshing. There's no bitter burnt flavors. It's not too sweet. It's just perfect. So try it out. Let me know what you guys think. Have a wonderful day.